Yours is the most terrible crime a human being can commit. I accuse you of a wasted life. Guilty. Papillon, Franklin Schaffner's 1973, I'd say fairly iconic film, uh, Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman. Everyone's heard of it, not necessarily all, no, everyone has seen it, we certainly hadn't. This is my suggestion this week. Um, who would like to go first? Tom, what were your initial thoughts of Papillon? I, I loved it. Um, it has... It was very strong in regards to two of my uh, my kind of favourite thing about classic films, and also why I don't like a lot of modern films that that try and go for that kind of epic style. Uh, in that it had a really good score throughout, uh, and there were long periods of that dialogue and the music managed to carry it and portray all of the emotion. Uh, and and the the location um, scouts had clearly done an amazing job, and and the production was really great. Uh, and I think that. Um, that was the most noticeable, noticeable feature for me. Um, and I find that uh, uh, with a lot of CGI that's been brought in, uh, a, a lot of the kind of animations or effects that they can put on actors now, as you saw in The Irishman, or, you, or that get, um, they get uh, placed on the set, um, I, I think it detracts a lot from, from films. Uh, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm watching an epic, I, I tend to want something that's that's quite realistic in, in regards to it does the action or stuff then that doesn't have to be realistic but but where it where it's placed i think helps uh carry the film a lot uh, and i thought that was that was really brilliant about about this particular feature yeah I mean, it was filmed on location as far as i'm aware so they did actually film on devil's island uh and did you watch the end credits when they had the pictures of the yeah yeah actual yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing to see, isn't so it? I did some reading up after the after the film actually um, about uh, as to how much of a true story it is, and it, it it is quite interesting kind of part of history and one that's uh, one that's kind of shunned upon a bit in France. But um, there's there's some ambiguity as to how much of the film is uh, is a true story. It's it's based on a memoir, mm. um, which is quite interesting. Uh, and the memoirs did actually catapult the, the gentleman into fame, and he featured in a few films after yeah. it. And uh, th there's some questions as to whether it's been sensationalised a little bit and, and stolen from other uh, inmates' kind of experience. But uh, uh, the fact kind of remains that he he, he did actually he was in the these period papers of it. And what's quite interesting is that they actually cut a lot of. Um, so he was incarcerated in in multiple different locations, Caribbean, most of South America. Um, Rasta one I thought was was kind of, was was quite interesting. With that from... <laughs> he was incarcerated. You're like you're like an incredible ventriloquist or something. <laughs> Oh uh, no! He, uh, yeah, he was incarcerated. <laughs> he was incarcerated in loads of different countries, wasn't he? Honduras and Colombia and all the like, loads of different spots. Uh, uh, Henri Charrier it was pa the real Papillon, wasn't he? Um, it, it, the the quote name. attributed to him was seventy. It was seventy-five percent fact, twenty-five yeah. percent feel what well exciting fiction. Yeah. Not not fiction to the point where you wouldn't believe it, but fiction to the point where it's yeah plays on other people's stories and that sort of stuff. Mm. Liam, what did you think? What were your first thoughts? Um, pretty knackered uh, by the end of it. Pretty um, uh, deflated. Uh, I, the first two-thirds of the film, I was uh, really connected with, uh, really into. Um, and the last, uh, there, was a, there was a couple of scenes which kind of played a little Ulri for me, and it kind of lost me. Um, I spent the last uh, just a little tired, um, and just really wanting him to escape. Um, but I thought that the acting was pretty brilliant across the board. Um, I liked the script. I thought the dialogue was pretty neat in places. Um, I thought there was some very good visual storytelling, where there wasn't much dialogue needed or required and there were just scenes played uh, certain ideas played forward just with a like a motif 
Yeah, okay. so certainly towards the middle when he um when he was locked yeah. away in solitary confinement, there's barely any dialogue at all in there, is there, for about twenty five minutes of the film. But you get it all from the cockroach, like the cockroach. Yeah. Start, he starts off disgusted by it and throwing it away, and then later on he's chasing chasing after it, trying to grab it. Yeah, which I think is a really good way of showing his increasing desperation. Um, and then in other places there was a similar there was similar things like when he was recuperating and picks up that cricket off the windowsill and lets it go. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, and there were, there were many moments like that in the film, which I thought landed really well. I thought the dynamic between um, McQueen and Hoffman was interesting. There wasn't loads of, um, there wasn't loads on the page for them to you know, there wasn't a hell of a lot spoken between them, but there were small gestures made which kind of built up their relationship. So that later on in the film, when McQueen was in the prison, not willing up, not willing to give up um, the source of the coconut that he'd been given, I kind of bought that. I was into that, um, which made the end slightly frustrating for me, where um, he's just kind of dumped on the beach um and they kind of just run off and the film doesn't really even deal with mcqueen being frustrated or annoyed by the fact that he has to just leave him that kind of landed a bit uh sort of odd for me and from there on in when they were kind of having the shenanigans on in honduras with the kind of with the, the local folks i thought that was strange to be rushed and there was some strange narrative narrative decisions and in the end I, I just became a little bit um tired um with it um but overall i thought that the film was 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 pretty grand pretty epic and um worth the watch i think it does fairly well though like you say considering it's yeah when you say you say epic i mean it's a it's a life-spanning story isn't it i mean it goes it's, it covers a lot of yardage uh given its two and a half hour run time, um, whether that's time in solitary confinement, whether it's them at sea, when he's actually, when they've actually escaped and they're in Honduras, when they're back on Devil's Island. So there's a lot going on there. Um, a lot of story threads, um, which at times, it doesn't follow that usual three act structure or something like that, but it could be because that's taken, it's taken from the, you know, the memoirs or the biography, autobiography. Um, and life life doesn't work in that way in terms of your your three act structure, but it, it it tells a lot in a short amount of time. You could easily probably see it even being even longer. Although I think it was probably about the right length. I think it got better for for me. It got better as it went on. I thought for the first sort of forty five minutes or so, Steve McQueen plays Steve McQueen, um, and it was interesting. There was the more you learn about it, there's you you find out that historically they're quite they're they're following the stories and what you know what used to happen how people were treated on the journey over to the island and all that but as it went on further and further I got a lot more invested into it um but there are so many different moments that you feel like it could be ah okay well that that's that's the end of that chapter and we'll conclude there or something but then there's a whole new story thread that's presented um but uh, yeah, for for me, yeah, it was uh, it was engaging. I really enjoyed it. I thought the acting was fine. I thought Steve McQueen's acting was got better as it went along as well. Particularly once he finally went into solitary confinement, I thought that was when you really got to see uh, Steve McQueen's talent for and what he can provide. Because first of all, I almost got sort of you know like Good, Bad, and the Ugly, where Clint Eastwood just sort of Clint Eastwood plays Clint Eastwood in a lot of his films, and I sort of got that impression from Steve McQueen in this this opening forty five minutes as well. And what you say with his chemist, with the relationship between him and Dustin Hoffman, uh, Louis Dager, uh, I didn't quite see the chemistry there. Uh, but by the time he was sending him food in prison, I saw. Sort of, I, 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 I suppose I got the impression that he was doing that because they were still trying to hold on to their side of the bargain in terms of them getting out of there, as opposed to, I want to help him out. I know uh, Dustin Hoffman's character felt bad because. Steve McQueen was taken away because he was trying to help him. But I, I thought maybe it wasn't quite, they weren't quite close enough friends by that point. But um, uh, yeah, uh, by, by the final scenes, I was really sad that they didn't sort of try and go off together. But I understood that they both, their mentality, their mental health had gone totally different ways. And Papillon's so 
desperate to escape over and over again. I think Tom, you might have read that he uh, he had tried to escape so many times from every single place he was incarcerated. Yeah. Um, it's just it's inside of him that he needs to escape. And you almost got that thought from when Dustin Hoffman was saying, you know, don't do it, don't do it, stay here, because life there actually you're wondering, well, what life are you going to? Now, you know, jump, jumping off with the coconuts to go float up. Is like, what are you so desperate to achieve when no, none of your life before is there anymore? Um, your whole life is based around these three islands now. And it's been, I don't know, 20 years in total or whatever. And it's, there is that sort of thought of, you know, are you so blinded by your desperation to escape that you're sort of forgetting what you're trying to, to get to? Um, which I, I thought was quite interesting, but yeah, Jem, um, uh, what did you what did you think? Rather than go on oh, too long. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, uh, just on your ending point there, I can completely agree with that. I think that was that was the overriding theme at, at, at the end. Um, they just sort of you know, they both had their, their differences. One of um, Louis had his farm and had his had his name pigs and his vegetables, and he was happy with his lot. And Steve McQueen wasn't, and and that would just showed the innate nature difference between the two of them. Uh, and he said, you know, you will die if you do this. He said, I know, but this isn't, that wasn't living to him and it was living to the other chap. Um, yeah, overall, I, I did really enjoy it. Um, like two and a half hours was, went fairly quickly for how, how long it actually was. Um, it slowed down towards the, the, the last third. Um, specific, well, especially with, with the scene um, with the uh, native um, Hondurans, uh, I thought that that was, it could have been a brilliant scene, but it didn't really flesh it out enough to um, to carry as much weight as it perhaps could have. Yeah, because he 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 had a shot there of a, of a really good good life. He had a you know, he had a, he had a lady. He had um, respect from the tribes because he gave him the tattoo and it went successfully. And I think they could have they could have given a bit more to that. I, I don't know how much of that is just because the, it's not really that touched on. That's yeah. weird because in, in in the film it shows that the tribe leave, but in in his actual memoirs, it's he chose to leave because he had he wanted to get back to. Uh, that, that's to that's what I was going to come life. on to. Yeah, I, I don't know how much know of that was was direction or how much of that was okay. We well, we've got to stay true to the to the, the actual book. Um, I just thought that that scene could have could have fleshed it out a bit more because um, yeah. it was quite a pivotal moment. Yeah, he was he was a free man at this point, and instead he he decides to to keep going rather than. Um, but the, the what the whole the whole film showed the showed the differences. I mean, we obviously watched the Bandit a couple of weeks ago, and and that nineteen ninety four felt like an older movie yeah. than this, and it just shows that but by making some key direction and um, cinematic decisions, you can you can keep a, a, you can keep a film interesting without a huge special effects budget. Um, and and yes, you could say it's it, it's a it's a, it's a relatively easy film because there's lots of confined scenes with with prisons and stuff like that. But there is still, there is still action. Um, all of the the action scenes and the fighting reminded me a lot of uh, of Indiana Jones, like some of the early one, like Red is Lost Ark type thing, and had a lot of um, uh, a lot of thoughts thoughts like that that just sort of took it back to that. But I think the it, it kept it interesting, which was which was the key compared to a lot of films that could be that long, could be older like that sometimes, where the special effects and uh, and whatnot are overdone and and they are dated and and it wasn't in this uh, and so as you said it's quite an enjoyable long film um that keeps you keeps you interested it's a nice comparison active. isn't it whether you like compare even like good bad the ugly um which was in the end what about four or five years before this and you can see the slow progression of uh, yeah. the quality of cinema i mean the budget was 12 million dollars for this it was actually but for the time, it was quite a big budget. Now it doesn't look that big, but 12 million beers, mm. but probably because they filmed on set for a lot of it. But like you say, a lot of it was very authentic. Yeah. Um, my, and... my, my favourite scenes, without a doubt, were, were the ones in the solitary confinement. I thought, yeah. I thought they were actually brilliant, the way that they played with the light and the single yeah. single shark coming down and the cockroaches and the shot that they did where they, they all stick their heads out through the little portholes. Yeah. They, they, you know, they look left and they look right and then... And then He's, he spends his five years in there or whatever, and then and then it's him going, how do yeah. I looking? I, yeah. I thought that was really really well done. Really, and the cool. way the camera, yeah, when when the first or first opens, the camera follows it through, and you and you you're there like ducking. I thought it was it was really quite good. Didn't didn't um, coconut look like coconuts never looked so tasty before? Like than seeing him no. chow into yeah. that first coconut that he got through. Jamblob Sniggins, yeah. what what did you think? What are your thoughts? 